Today we'll be looking at the best vertical mobility abilities that players can use in the game, or abilities that allow your character to move in ways that are different from just a normal run speed increase. And also we won't be looking at toys, profession items, or zone gear items since they could make another video on their own. These abilities are very handy when trying to get anywhere high or low without taking fall damage. And this video was written while the writer was trying to reach treasures in Xerath Mortis before flying was available. And at number 10, we have the Demon Hunter class ability, Double Jump and Glide. There is no big shocker to anyone who's ever seen a Demon Hunter play, but these abilities have a unique usefulness for scaling obstacles and getting down them quickly, and their utility is often forgotten and easily overlooked. Of course, the Double Jump will only get a Demon Hunter to a rather low elevation compared to some of the other abilities in this video, but it still counts nonetheless. Technically, gliding is not unique to Demon Hunters, since Zandalari Troll players also have the racial ability Pterodactyl Swoop, which functions in a similar manner. However, Pterodactyl Swoop has a 15 minute cooldown, whereas the Demon Hunter's Glide ability has a cooldown of 1.5 seconds. Goblin Gliders exist and are just as useful, since they're available to all players and Goblin Gliders are always plentiful in the Auction House, especially at the beginning of Expansion or Patch. Gliding is not only useful for avoiding fall damage, but also if you need to quickly get away from enemies and are near a high enough place to jump off of. And at number 9, we have the Priest ability, Leap of Faith. Leap of Faith instantly pulls the spirit of a party or raid member directly in front of the priest. Only Disciplined and Holy Priest could use Leap of Faith. Added in Cataclysm, Leap of Faith is also sometimes called Life Grip, to contrast it with the DK's ability, Death Grip. Leap of Faith can be quite handy if a priest is already high up on a tall spot, and can pull a party member on the ground up to them. Leap of Faith has a 40 yard range, which is quite long, and additionally it has a relatively short cooldown of only 90 seconds. The cast time of Leap of Faith is instant, but the act of moving the player is actually not instantaneous, since it takes one second. However, Leap of Faith's usefulness is limited to a very small handful of niche situations for movement, since it is principally just an ability for a priest to save a player from dying for whatever reason be it a mob aggro or falling off of something. There is, however, a Shadowlands legendary called Vault of Heavens, which allows you to do a reverse leap of faith, jumping to an ally quickly instead of moving them to you, which makes it much more useful as a movement ability for the priests themselves. Next up at number 8 is the Goblin Racial Ability Rocket Jump. This ability was added in Cataclysm alongside the Goblin as a playable race for the Horde. The ability has a 90 second cooldown, although it originally had a 2 minute cooldown in Cataclysm. Rocket Jump launches the Goblin forward using the rockets from their belt, and is somewhat similar to a Mage's Blink ability, but in a curved arc. And just a little note, Blink won't be on this list because we don't really count it as a vertical mobility ability. Anyways, while Rocket Jump usually does not work when trying to travel uphill, it can be used to reduce fall damage. Rocket Jump, if used while falling, resets the top of your fall to when you jumped. So if you jump from a high cliff, then use Rocket Jump near the ground, you'll take little to no fall damage. Unfortunately, this ability removes any slow falling effects upon its use, because Blizzard hates fun. Another drawback to Rocket Jump is that it also shares a cooldown with another Goblin Racial ability named Rocket Barrage, which is just a simple DPS ability. So you have to pick between either doing a little bit of extra damage, or being able to use your Rocket Jump. And at number 7, we have a two-way tie between Disengage and Vengeful Retreat. First up, we have the ability Disengage. This is a baseline Hunter ability that's learned at level 4 and has a 20 second cooldown. This ability allows hunters to jump backwards from their position and land behind them, which is very useful for getting away from enemies quickly. Disengage has been in the game since vanilla, but it was just an ability hunters could use to avoid threat back then. At the beginning of Wrath of the Lich King, Disengage was redesigned and allowed the hunter to leap backwards up to 13 yards with a 30 second cooldown. In Mr. Pandaria, it was changed again so the hunter no longer had to be in combat in order to use the ability, and it was reduced to a 20 second cooldown. Disengage can be even more useful when used near the ground after a long fall as it can also be used to reduce or prevent fall damage. Disengage can be given a small speed boost by selecting level 40 talent post haste, which frees the hunter from all movement impairing effects and increases the hunter's movement speed by 50%. On our second entry at number 7, we have the Vengeful Retreat. This ability is similar to Disengage because it primarily functions in the same manner by making the player leap backwards. Vengeful Retreat is a Havoc Demon Hunter ability with a cooldown of 25 seconds, and was added in Legion with the Demon Hunter class. Vengeful Retreat has an instant cast time and removes all snares from the player and sends the player flying backwards. Vengeful Retreat can have its cooldown reduced by 5 seconds if the player has chosen the level 50 talent momentum. The ability also damages nearby enemies when used and decreases the enemy movement speed by 70% for 3 seconds. The fact that Vengeful Retreat also damages enemies is the main difference between it and Disengage. Vengeful Retreat can be learned at level 10 and is great for Demon Hunters because it works perfectly alongside the other mobility abilities such as the previously mentioned Double Jump and Glide abilities which makes Demon Hunters one of the most mobile classes in the game. A Demon Hunter can very easily use Vengeful Retreat 
and then turn around and glide in midair, for example. The main drawbacks to disengage and ventral retreat are that they can be hard to see and control where you will end up when you jump backwards. Turning the camera around might make things easier, but this can still be tricky to get down perfectly every time. Using these two abilities that leave the player backwards also requires some experience before you can nail them down. Additionally, none of these abilities give great height, none of them have more than one charge, and all have 20 to 30 second cooldowns, since these abilities were made for the flight in the fight or flight. Finally, both Disengage and Ventral Retreat usually cannot work going uphill. It can be argued that these abilities are cheesed since they were not intended to be used in this way. Due to their very nature, they land at the low end of this list due to their somewhat unpredictable and slightly off kiltering feeling when used in this manner. At the end of the day, they are mobility abilities which can give you some elevation, so there's no qualms about trying to use them to your advantage. And at number 6, we have a handful of three rogue teleportation abilities, which are Killing Spree, Shadow Step, and Shadow Strike. The first ability is Killing Spree, which was added in Wrath. This is a level 50 outlaw talent which allows the rogue to teleport to an enemy and damage it. However, it not only requires a target enemy, but it also has a pretty short range of only 10 yards and a cooldown of 2 minutes. The next ability is Shadow Step, a level 18 ability for both assassination and subtlety rogues. This is pretty much just a teleportation ability with no DPS mechanics as it simply teleports you to your target and gives you a speed boost and giving you the option to target an ally or enemy. Shadow Step has a pretty short cooldown of only 30 seconds and a range of 25 yards, which is a lot more than Killing Spree. Shadow Step was added in the game in the Morning Crusade, and there's even a PvP talent called Silhouette, which reduces its cooldown by two-thirds when you cast it on an ally. The final rogue teleport ability is Shadow Strike. This is a level 12 subtlety rogue ability added in Legion. Shadow Strike allows for a stealthy subtlety rogue to appear behind the target from up to 25 yards away and deal 25% additional damage. There's not much more to discuss here other than more often than not, these abilities don't work when trying to cross great vertical distances but small vertical distances they usually do okay with. And at number 5 we have the Druid ability Wild Charge, which is a level 25 talent ability that's been in the game since Mista Pandaria. This ability grants a movement ability that varies based on the player's shape-shifting form. Wild Charge has a 15 second cooldown and a total of 5 different abilities depending on whether the player shape-shifted or what form they're in, and has a range of 5 to 25 yards. If a Druid is non-shape-shifted, Wild Charge allows them to target a nearby ally and fly to their position similar to a Reverse Leap of Faith. In aquatic form, Wild Charge increases swim speed by an additional 150% for 5 seconds. In bear form, Wild Charge functions like Charge, in that it lets the Druid charge to an enemy as well as immobilizing them for 4 seconds. In cat form, Wild Charge will make the Druid leap behind an enemy, dazing them for 3 seconds. However, there must be an enemy for a Druid to be able to leap to, and that enemy must be in their line of sight. In Moonkin form, Wild Charge functions similarly to Disengage, Eventual Retreat, and Rocket Jump, in that it bounds the player backwards 15 to 25 yards. Finally, in travel form, Wild Charge enables the Druid to leap forward 20 yards. And because of the different ways this ability grants a vertical mobility, it definitely deserves a high spot on this list. But the next couple of spots are just a little bit more useful or iconic. And at number 4, we have the baseline warrior ability, Charge. This ability allows players to quickly reach a target no matter in which direction, and can usually allow a player to race up hills or other unclimbable obstacles on a 20 second cooldown. The ability's description reads, Charge rapidly moves the warrior towards the target within an 8 to 25 yard range, rooting it for 1.5 seconds, and generates 10 to 20 rage. Charge has been in the game since vanilla WoW, and its only significant change was that it was changed from a stun effect to a root effect in World of the Draenor, and of course usable in combat. The other main benefit from charge besides its mobility boost is it can sometimes reduce fall damage. It is possible to charge while midair, while jumping, while falling, or while suffering knockback. This can save the warrior's life if they're being knocked over a cliff, or simply save fall damage and time otherwise wasted returning to combat. Charge can additionally be augmented by the level 30 warrior ability Double Time, which adds a second additional charge, as well as reducing its cooldown by 3 seconds. A somewhat similar ability to charge in another warrior's ability is named Intervene. This ability is learned at level 43 and allows the warrior to run at high speed towards an ally, intercepting all melee and ranged attacks against them for 6 seconds while they remain within 10 yards. Warriors also have the ability Execute. This ability is learned at level 10 and can only be used on targets below 20% health. Death Sentence is a PvP town that allows the warrior to use Execute itself as a charge. Death Sentence has a short cooldown of only 6 seconds. And if Death Sentence is used alongside Double Time, this essentially means a warrior can have 3 charges, at least in theory and in PvP. Demon Hunters also have an ability similar to Charge called Fellblades. Fellblade is essentially the same ability as Charge but with a demonic twist and does not root the target. Fellblade is level 15 talent and has a cooldown of 15 seconds. And at number 3 we have a different warrior ability, Heroic Leap, which allows a player to jump to a targeted location. 
It also deals all damage to enemies within 8 yards and has a 45 second cooldown. Fury Warriors also have a PvP talent called Barbarian, which grants another Heroic Leap for free if cast within 3 seconds, and increases the damage of Heroic Leap by 200%. There is also the talent Bounding Stride, which reduces its cooldown by 15 seconds, while buffing your speed by 70% for 3 seconds after leaping. But that isn't even all. There's also the Legendary Power Leaper, which gives you two extra charges of the spell, which was originally a Legion Legendary Power called Timeless Stratagem. So. If you wish to leap and run around like a bloody jackrabbit in PvP with 6 leaps giving a 70% speed boost for 3 seconds each, go wild I guess. Heroic Leap was added in Cataclysm and still remains one of the most useful mobility abilities for warriors to this day. Heroic Leap has two other reskins which we'll discuss before moving on to the numbers 2 and 1 spots. First up is Grappling Hook, an outlaw rogue ability which is learned at level 18. This ability allows a rogue to launch a grappling hook which pulls the player to the target location. The Grappling Hook has a 40 yard range with a 1 minute cooldown that was added in Legion. This ability can be modified with a level 25 talent Retractable Hook, which reduces the cooldown of Grappling Hook by 15 seconds and increases its retraction speed. Next up is the Demon Hunter ability Metamorphosis, which is learned at level 10. The Havoc version of this ability allows a Demon Hunter to leap 40 yards and turn into a demon, gaining several DPS buffs. Metamorphosis has remained the same since Demon Hunters were introduced in Legion and can be very useful for getting uphill, since it's essentially the Demon Hunter's heroic leap although on a rather long cooldown of 4 minutes, and the version that allows you to leap is limited to Havoc only, which is not really a good way to get height. So why is it even mentioned? Well with that we lead into the actual Heroic Leap lookalike, Infernal Strike. An ability granted to Vengeance Demon Hunters, this ability works like the Heroic Leap really. 20 second cooldown, 2 charges, 30 yard range, leap to a location and do an AoE. However, while it has far less support than Heroic Leap, it does have the Abyssal Strike talent, which causes it to do a fair bit of extra AoE damage. But in this case, more importantly, reduces its cooldown by 8 seconds, down to only 12. Pairing this with the ability to double jump and glide, this easily makes Vengeance Demon Hunters the most versatile spec for movement, even more so in PvP, at least for just the Demon Hunter that is. And at number 2, we have the baseline Warlock ability, Demonic Gateway. Demonic Gateway is an iconic Warlock ability which creates a pair of two portals. Clicking on one portal will quickly transport you to the other one. The portals can be placed anywhere between 10 to 40 yards away, and can be placed at different elevations or even over gaps, making it one of the most useful mobility abilities in the entire game. Demonic Gateway can be handy in almost every situation, such as skipping mob packs in Mythic Plus dungeons, quickly escaping one-shot mechanics in raids, or quickly moving the flag across the battleground wars on Gulch. It also is heavily used in World First Raids to the point where it was actually mandatory for a lot of fights, like Mythic Kill Jaden in the Tomb of Sargeras, and Painsmith in S.O.D. Demonic Gateway was added in Mists of Pandaria and is currently learned by Warlocks at level 49. The ability has a 2 second cast and 10 second cooldown. The cooldown doesn't really matter, however, since the major downside to Demonic Gateway is it has a 90 second lockout after being used. After a player has used the Gateway once, they get a debuff which reads, faded into the nether and unable to use another Demonic Gateway. This debuff even persists through death, which stops any kind of death cheese you might try with it. Demonic Gateway's cooldown distance travel can be increased using the PvP talent to Gateway Mastery. This talent increases Demonic Gateway's range by 20 yards, reduces the cast time by 30%, and reduces the time between how often players can take the Demonic Gateway by 15 seconds. Another downside to Demonic Gateway is that it also has a cast time, so it technically can be interrupted by damage, interrupts, or movement. Although if you really hate this downside, there is the Pillars of the Dark Portal Legendary Power, originally from a pair of Legion Legendary Pants of the same name, this legendary makes your demonic gateway instant cast, and the first use of it not triggering the cooldown, paired with the fact that while you travel through the gate, any enemies you come into contact with are knocked away. In the recent expansion of Shadowlands, there has been two major changes to demonic gateway, the first being a change to its line of sight freedom, now requiring light of sight to work. It has become far less abusable, no longer letting you, for example, skip through the log in Mist of Terran Scythe. However, to compensate, it gained the special ability to go over pits and gaps, no longer suffering from the no path found limitations of other abilities. The other change being an item called the Gateway Control Shard, an item which can be purchased for 100 gold and put in your bags, bars, and macros, allowing you to set a hotkey to use this item, which when activated will activate the closest demonic gateway in range, fix it an old issue many raiders have of trying to click on the portal that everyone in the entire raid was stacking on top of as well. Lastly, before we move on to number 1, did you know Demonic Gateway originally had health and resilience, a default 70 yard range was activated by walking into it, and had limited charges that refreshed over time? It's kind of crazy how much this ability has changed from the launch of Mr. Pandaria to the launch of Wad, and then not to change much at all since then. And finally, at number 1, we have the Door of Shadows ability from the Venthyr Covenant. Door of Shadows can transport a player up to 35 yards away. 
It has a 1.5 second cast time and a recharge time of 1 minute. Door of Shadows is incredibly useful for climbing up hills and obstacles, and can sometimes pass right through them. It was by far the best ability to collect treasures in Xerath Mortis before flying came out. Additionally, Door of Shadows is available to all classes, since any class can join the Venthyr Covenant, unlike all the other abilities listed in this video so far, which are all class specific. So while this ability is very simple and does the same as some of the other abilities like Heroic Leap and Infernal Strike, even with the downside of requiring a cast time, the fact any and every class and spec can use this carries the ability hard, as all of them require you to move to specific specs or even reroll to a class to use. This ability can simply be picked up in Ouroboros and used as needed, then swap back no problem. This is made even better with all the customizations you can use in order to buff the ability from the Soulbind trees. Intimidation Tactics to buff its cooldown speed by 3 times if you're below 50% health. Enduring Gloom to cause it to give you a 20% health shield for 8 seconds after being cast. Watch the Shoes, which causes it to free you from roots and snares. Fancy Footwork, which causes it to increase your movement speed by 40%, decaying over 6 seconds after use. Agent of Chaos, disorienting enemies nearby when you appear for 6 seconds. And best of all, Leisurely Gate which gives it two charges at the cost of an increased 30 second cooldown per charge. And made even better with the first Sigil Trinket, resetting the cooldown of your Covenant Signature ability, Door of Shadows included, although on a 5 minute cooldown. This ability is at number 1 because it avoids the downsides of many of the other abilities on this list, while also just being usable in all classes. In the beta, there was a Soulbind that made this ability instant cast, which was quickly removed as it made the ability way more powerful than all the other Covenant abilities in pretty much all forms of content. Alright, and that's the video. If you know of any other crazy mobility abilities that we may have missed, or have ideas for future videos just like this one, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments.